Let's take a look at GGMD A3, worksheet four. We're looking at volumes of pyramids now. So pyramids are a much more interesting item than prisms because they don't have those two identical opposite bases. They come, uh, a pyramid comes to what's called an apex or to a single point. And that location obviously doesn't have an opposite uh, parallel base. So it comes to a point. So we begin to kind of talk about the relationship between the prism that we know and the pyramid that we're now interested in. Now you can see that if they have the same base and the same height as these two, this has a whole lot less volume than this. And so you, I always ask the question, hmm, half, three, four, how many of these fit in this guy? And it sure looks like about two when I look at it, because I'm like, okay, maybe one like this, and one like that, and maybe they fit together, something like that. Uh, a fun experience, uh, always in class, is to test out that uh, uh, wonderment here. So I have, I have a pyramid here that has the same base and the same height. And I want to know how many of these will fit into here. So uh, please uh, help me with this procedure. It's going to make a bit of a mess. I have something to catch all these little beans as they come out. But the idea is we fill this up with all our little beans here. Oh, you can hear me dropping them. I want to fill it up. And that's pretty close. And why I use beans or sand or water, I used to use water. Water gets all over everything. At least it dries up and goes away instead of having to vacuum up all the beans. But here is one of my pyramids. Here is my cube in this case, but my prism. It's the same height, same base, and uh, I pour it in. Now you say to yourself, whoa, how, how much have I filled there? Is that uh, a half? No, that's not quite a half. You know, how much is that? So we say, well, let's put another one in. So, whoa, got a little crazy that time. You can hear all of it dropping. Uh, and we pack it on down, and then we pour it on in. And hopefully we don't lose too much. Well, are we at half there? So maybe maybe four of these? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Well, I do know, actually. But let's just do one more for good luck. Maybe two more. Whoa, whoa. Making, a, making a big mess now. And uh, don't worry, I'll vacuum it all up. Oop, oop, oop. There it is. Now I'm a little, I'm a couple of, a couple of short. Let me just do a quick little fix while you're not looking. Whoa, there we go. And so, sure enough, three of them fit into it. Amazing. Now that's hard to maybe visualize back here, but I think you can kind of see that one would fit, a second would fit, and then there's some region in the middle that would, if it was melted material and could move and bend, would fit in there. So we learn actually that the prism, the, the prism, let's see if I can quickly make a, a prism of the same height and same base there. This guy is BH and the, the identical base and the same height would be exactly one-third of that. So all we have to do is use this nice little formula of one-third BH. So you just calculate it just like it's normal and then divide by three because you know it's a third of the prism that it would enclose it. The last thing, and then we'll just do some calculations, there's a couple important items here. We talk about the height of the pyramid. We talk about the slant height. This red line is out in the face of the of the pyramid. Uh, let me let me quickly uh, show you what I mean by that. So here is uh, a pyramid and the red line here, if you can see it, let's see, well you can kind of see it, the red one is out on the face and it is the slant height. The actual height is the metal bar down the middle and the green edges, corners, are called the lateral edges. So what happens in these problems, and I'll show them to you, is that sometimes you get different measurements given to you, but ultimately you've got to find the actual height, and we'll show you how to find some of those things uh, on the video. We've already talked about the pyramid and, and its different naming techniques, or not techniques, but language of 
faces and edges and so on. We've done that, but um, this is called the apex. I don't have that written here, but um, this formula is a little trickier to come up uh, with. Uh, there is an activity that kind of does an approximation. The way it does an approximation, like most limit arguments, is that idea of stacking cubes on top of each other, you know, to form, to uh, form, I'm not going to be able to draw this nicely or anyways, but to stack, to stack them up, you know, to create kind of that shape. Um, I don't know, it's not doing so well, but you get the idea. I'd, I'd stack a bunch of these things to make, you know, a pyramid-like shape. And I could use, you know, that volume to approximate this. Now, these cubes, of course, by their size, leave huge gaps and bumps that doesn't make it into this nice, beautiful pyramid like this one. But again, with that same idea of a limit argument, I'm able to make them smaller and smaller and smaller bits and bytes and make it more like this, and that allows me to figure out a way to do it. A way that most teachers do it, kind of as an informal argument, is they can take um, take your prism, and if you take the same um, pyramid with the same base, so this would be, uh, again, a pentagonal base here, which you can't see, but if you took it and poured it into there, it would fill exactly a third of it, as long as the base was the same, and the height was the same, you find out it fills up a third, and you pour it in again, it fills up another third, and then it fills it completely. It's a great activity to do in a classroom, and and uh, you kind of saw me uh, do that as, as an opening to give you a little warm-up on that idea. So let's do a couple quick calculations. Um, so the idea, again, is just you, you just think of it in terms of volume of a prism, but then you say, oh, it's a pyramid, so it's a third of that. So it would go like this, one-third the base, well, the base is easy, 8 times 8, that's our base, and our height is right here, is 10. You just multiply that out, I'm not going to bother, you got that down. One-third the base, 4 times 6, this is a rectangle, times the height, times 8, multiply that out, here's my base, my height, and my one-third. Here, um, it's one-third. My base this time is the triangle, so it's one-half its base, which is three times five times its height. So again, let's walk you through where all these numbers come from. That's the base. There's the height. There's the one-third. We multiply all that together and get our answer. Again, I don't, I don't think I need to do the actual math. That's very simple stuff. Now, Questions get better when they don't give you just a straight up height. They give you like a slant height. So what it means is you got to get after this height first before you can start solving the problem. But there's some fun tricks here. Um, in this square, they would tell us that this is a square pyramid, or we would see that. So half of out to the center would be 3 there. And now I still don't have my height, but I see it's a 3-something at 5 triangle, which means that this, again, is a 3, 4, 5. If you haven't figured out 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple, you're missing out on all the fun. But that's true. And um, and so if I was calculating this, it would be one-third the area of the base, which is 6 times 6, times the height, which is now 4. There's my base, there's my one-third, there's my height. Now, if they give you a lateral edge, uh, things things get more interesting here a little bit um, because you've got to go lateral. Well, one way to do it is go lateral edge to find the slant height and then use the slant height to find the actual height. Let me draw these out in, in pieces. So the lateral edge is 13. 13, not 15. 13. 5 is this little piece, so this would be L. You see that triangle there in the group? So there it is, looking out to that corner, out to that lateral edge. And again, hopefully you can see my friend, uh, the Pythagorean triple, 5, 12, 13. Now, that gave us the slant height of 12. We still don't have the actual height. So i got to get inside to find the actual height. 12 is the hypotenuse. 
the distance out to center from here would be half of 10 is 5. And I need to know this. This is not a triple um, because the 13, it wouldn't go 5, 12, 13. This is the longest side. So I'm going to have to do a little Pythagorean work there. I see I was off the, uh, off the edge there a little bit. And so let's do some quick work here. 25 x squared equals 144 x squared equals uh, 144 minus 25. So we get uh, the easy answer of um, one square or 119 or the square root of 119. And that's approximately, let's give you a, approximately that answer is about 10.91. So I'm ready to solve. Uh, one third BH is my formula, so one third the area of the base is 10 times 10, and my height is about 10.91. I multiply that mess together times 100 divided by 3, and I get 363.62 centimeters cubed, and so on. One last one, just to give you an example of the old hexagon, my friend, the hexagon. Uh, again, to solve for its base, I'm going to draw this in. This, of course, would be 3. This is a 30, 60, 90, so this would be 3 root 3. I don't know, maybe I needed to have drawn that out for first. Let me do that real quickly. you got to get used to these guys. But this would be a 3, because half of 6 is 3. This would be 3 root 3, because this is a 30, 60, 90. So, I'm ready to go. One third bh, one-third, area of the base. Now the base is hexagon, which is uh, one-half the apothem times the perimeter. Now it would be six times six, so that would be 36. That is the base, and then the height was given to me at 18. I multiply all that together. And I get 324 root 3 centimeters cubed. Awesome. One third the base times the height. The base was a regular hexagon, so it's one half AP. I found the A by running again my 30, 60, 90 special triangle there. And my perimeter is, of course, 6 times 6. And so we got lots of good calculation and thinking there.